Hello, it's Michael E. Gerber speaking to you from Carlsbad, California. Awaken the entrepreneur within. What an extraordinary thing to do. What an extraordinary way to begin it. I'm so thrilled to be here in this webinar to take the subject of money deep, deep, deep down into your consciousness in a way that it makes absolute sense to you. Today's show is about money. It's about the E-Myth Chief Financial Officer. And my great growing guest is America's CFO, what I call him, and that's Fred Parrish, my co-author of the E-Myth Chief Financial Officer. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Hello, Fred. How are you there in Dallas? Yeah, I'm great, Michael. Thanks. <laughs> Delighted to see you. So this is our first show together. We've never done this before together. And so what we're going to do for the next 60 minutes is just wing the hell out of it. How's Let's that do it. You? Absolutely. You Let's do it. Super. Wonderful. So, Fred, what I'd love for you to do, first of all, is to describe for everybody who's joining us today what you've been doing for the past 30 years, why I call you America's chief financial officer, and what, in fact, the meaning of money is to you in the work that you've done. Right. Well, um, I, actually, Michael, I have worked in positions from staff accountant to CEO in companies from uh, pre-revenue startups all the way to multi-billion dollar organizations. And, I, and I've seen for a very long time that no matter how uh, large the company is, or in our case, how small the company is, they have the same problems. They just have them for different reasons. And so what I have been doing for really the last 25, 30 years is building a system to help every company of any size to solve those money problems. Because at the end of the day, when it's all over with, uh, no matter what you're doing, if you're out of cash, you're out of business. So we have to solve that problem. Well, understand what you just said. When you're out of cash, you're out of business. Essentially what you're saying is that 96% of all people in business, those people we call the smallest of the small, the smallest of the small, which are self-employed people who are called by so many with this ignominious word, solopreneurs, there's nothing preneur about them, is that they're out of cash. They're out of cash and they're out of luck. And yet they survive by simply doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, what I call in e-myth terms, busy, 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 busy. Something different has got to happen. And that something different really comes down to the conversation today, not just about money, but about the role that money plays as one goes to work on one's job, goes to work on one's life, goes to work on one's business in order to transform the state of one's job, one's life, one's business. And so effectively, that's the first question I want to ask you, Fred, unfairly, and I just <laughs> threw this to you today. Um, how does America's CFO deal with the problems our smallest of the small face every day? We're not dealing with a billion dollar company. We're not even dealing with a hundred million dollar company. We're not even dealing with a million dollar company. We're dealing with doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, busy, busy. It's about as basic as one can get. But still, when somebody reads our book, the E-Myth Chief Financial Officer, why most small businesses run out of money and what to do about it, Everybody who's listening to us today has to know there is something every single one of you can do about it. So, Fred, how does the CFO relate to everybody who's listening to us today? Well, Michael, and, and you and I have talked about this before. Without financial information, you have really no objective way of measuring what you're doing, how you're doing, where you're going. 
It doesn't matter what you're doing. It all translates into dollars at some point along a particular continuum. And depending on the size of the company, a multi-billion dollar company that is out of cash is bankrupt. A, a solopreneur that's out of money, out of cash, is out of business. Now, the, the smaller the company, the more that person needs to start thinking about all the sources of income that they have. It may start to bleed over into their personal life and how they manage those aspects that may influence or may impact their business that they're trying to get off the ground. So to me, it's all about clarity, number one, and number two, about balance. Well, you How just, you balance all those issues. You, and thank you for that. You just said something which is truly important to the smallest of the small that we're addressing here today. And that is, there's no difference in most cases in the smallest of the small between their personal life and their business life, because the two are essentially merged. They formed a partnership between John, who lives with Mary, and John and Mary are photographers who take pictures for a living, and they call that a business. Exactly. Well, you and I know it's not really a business, it's a job, but effectively, John and Mary's financial life are tied up in John and Mary's photographic life, and they have to be merged in some way together so that that data, that information, that financial oversight you just described has to be done synchronistically. Talk about that if you would. Yeah, they are absolutely inextricably linked. There, there is no way to separate the two. Once the business gets to a particular size, you know that that can be done. But until we reach a level where the business is self-sustaining and there is sufficient revenue and there are sufficient resources to operate the business separately, anything that happens in their personal life, whether that is from an income stream that is impacted in some way, or from an expense that is increased beyond what a, um, a manageable amount is, is, like I said, going to bleed over into that company, and it is going to have an impact. So I like to think about that, Fred, and thank you. I like to think about that in a way that um, is very, very new and very, very challenging to the people I describe this to. I call it TUCO, capital T-W-O, capital C-O, TUCO. TUCO is a mindset, and it's a mindset of the smallest of the small or the largest of the large. It essentially says that on the left hand, we have old co, and on the right hand, we have new co. Old co is our current, what we do every day, and everything we've done to get where we are. Old co is who we are today. New co is what we're creating for tomorrow. So the key to focusing on old co is to create sustainability. The key to creating new co is to think about growth. Most cases in the work that we have done in what we call radical you, which is the extraordinary entrepreneurial development school we're developing and growing as we speak. All the time we speak about old co, we're really talking about how to generate more, convert more, and to support what you create in old co for sustainability. Everything we're talking about in relationship to new co is to define what we call the eightfold path to growth. And we'll talk more about that in a moment, but a critical essence for all of this is the, the financial question related again to old co and related again to new co. And effectively what we're doing is bringing two co together for everybody we're talking to today in a way nobody's ever done before. 
So I'd love to think about the two co-conversation from a financial chief financial officer's perspective and give us light in that. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Too much light, too much light. I begin to explode with light and it just <laughs> throws everything out of, out of whack. Oh, that's exactly right. Fred, that's great, Michael. tell me. Yeah, I, again, I think that it, it, it all comes down to the idea of balance between cash coming in and cash going out. You can only grow as fast as your resources will allow you to grow. And so making that transition from old co to new co is critical in that you are generating a more sustainable, a larger and growing cash stream, revenue, sales, whatever you want to call it. But until you have the resources to support that growth, you need to be very, very focused and very, very balanced in how you carry out any particular plan. The worst time in a uh, company's life, Michael, the most dangerous time is not when you're running out of cash or when you're having cash flow problems. It is when you are growing very, very quickly because what people tend to do is pay attention to the growth and pay attention to the revenue and outstrip their resources and literally vaporize on the way to the, the larger company. And that's wonderful that you're bringing it up that way, Fred. And that's why I love this conversation. Because you understand, in Radical U, we understand that completely. We're essentially saying that Radical U is a five-year process. It's not something you're going to do tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. It's not hot and heavy. It's not how to get more sales, get more sales, get more sales, get more sales. The focus is much more leveraged, which is what I hear you talking about. Leveraged, leveraging the your ability to create a sustainable level of cash in hand that enables you to invest in a highly orchestrated and organized way in the work you're going to be doing in the future. So we're saying that old co is what you do and the cash you create and the profit you produce. And when that cash comes into play and how that cash comes into play. And for that, of course, we need to be able to preempt what might occur by having the knowledge about what might occur, the data that you talked about, the dashboard that's critical for you to be able to do that, which almost nobody in small business actually possesses. And secondly, to take the patient time to grow new co in the way new co must be grown. And that's what we call the eightfold path. The dream, the vision, the purpose, the mission, the job, the practice, the business, the enterprise. Allow me to do this once more. It's an extraordinary thing. I just shed light like you can't believe. <laughs> I'm a light factory. And it just explodes. <laughs> and the webinar goes with it. Sorry. Uh, so, Fred, you see that. So you can see that there are really two You can really see that there are two companies. There's the old co and there's the new co. So there are twin financial statements. You follow. Absolutely. And just like with Mary and John, we have to deal with the personal, I'm calling old co, and the impersonal, I'm calling new co. This is an incredibly difficult way for people to think at the very beginning. But from a chief financial officer's perspective, from a chief executor, executive officer's perspective, from a chief operating officer's perspective, it's absolutely critical. Can you say more about that? Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. You have to have structure. You have to have process. 
you have to have systems and you have to have the ability to predict outcomes based on decisions that you're making because you need to be able to look into the future and understand based on what you are doing today and any decisions, actions, initiatives you look to undertake, what is that going to produce in the future? And when is it going to produce it? Otherwise, you can't plan. You're just, as you say, you're doing it, doing it, doing it, and you're going to run up on a problem that you may not be able to overcome if you don't expect it is there. So tell us, Fred, about the tool that you've created that enables the smallest of the small to literally have that clarity, that picture from above as to what in fact is occurring and where the difficulties appear in the process of growth. Yeah, no, thank you, Michael. Um, The name of the application is the Profit Beacon. And effectively, it is literally an automated chief financial officer. So I'd actually have been able to go from zero, from setting up a brand new user, brand new company, loading data from QuickBooks, and creating a two-year monthly P&L and a two-year weekly cash flow in about eight minutes. So wow. it, is, it is very easy to use. It is very fast and, and quick in getting the information. The software does all of the financial analysis. It does all of that. Uh, more sophisticated finance type stuff in the software, in the background. And so a business owner and or someone in their company, if they're large enough to have another person in their company, um, can run this really right out of the box. And it will keep them focused on those areas of the business that are changing in ways that either they want to have changed that way and they can optimize that and continue doing those things that are happening in a good way. But more importantly, keeping track of those things that are starting to get off the rails. If we're starting to get out of alignment with our plan in terms of cost, it could cost you the company. So we need to pay attention to those things. We need to always be predicting where we're going. But what you're talking about in terms of my paradigm, which I'm calling TUCO, which effectively I'm describing as old co on the left, new co on the right, what you're describing as a tool is as essential for old co. That's for Mary and John, husband and wife, partners in life, as it is for Mary or John, who have this side prospect that they've created to sell their photography services to the world with the hope, not just that they can add income to Mary and John, husband and wife, old co, but they can create a new opportunity for Mary and John's life. And in the process, control what in fact comes of that opportunity by using a systems perspective, a systems state of mind, we might say, in both old co and new co, and in the process, merge the two in the way that indeed they indelibly are anyway. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. So therein lies the e-myth methodology, right? Everything has to be a system. And finance is no different. In fact, finance is probably easier uh, to put into a system and to develop a standard operating procedure than almost anything else, because everything else is a little bit more intangible. Finances are finances. Dollars are dollars. You know the numbers. It's just a matter of how you manage them, how you think about them, more importantly. And and the third thing really is how you put them to work. Well, Fred, what I hear you saying, and, and correct me if I'm not saying it in the way it needs to be said. Effectively, you said earlier 
that a bookkeeper and an accountant, a CPA, whatever we wish to call the financial arm of the smallest of the small to the largest of the large, that in fact, speaking to my CPA about this could be the worst thing I would do. Can you please speak about that? Because it's kind of an outrageous assumption based upon um, the reality of 100% of all small companies. Yeah, it, it, is kind of, it is a bit of a shock to the system, Michael, for people to hear this because we have been conditioned for at least 100 years to, to think about CPAs and accountants to be expert in everything financial. And unfortunately, that just is not the case. Wait a second, Fred. Let me just remark about that. You just said that we perceive accountants to be expert at all things financial. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Now, I don't want to piss off every accountant listening. <laughs> today. Yeah, I, I'll explain. So, yeah, but, we're, but we are going to piss them off. And effectively, I know that every time you disrupt the world, whether it be Uber or whether it be Google, or whether it be the iPhone, whenever you disrupt the world, you create an immense counter challenge from every expert who's being disrupted. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm expecting- What you and I are doing is disrupting the world as it relates to the smallest of the small by saying to the smallest of the small, all of the assumptions that experts have made are effectively going to take you exactly the opposite of where you need to go. Something else is needed. And that something else is what we're bringing to you at Radical You. And with what Fred is talking about, about his turnkey financial management system that will effectively lead you towards something you've never been led to before. So Fred, if you'll go on and talk more about that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little afraid, Michael, that someone, uh, some CPAs are going to find out where I am and bust into the room <laughs> any minute now. But here's what I mean by that. CPAs, for the most part, are very bright, very capable professionals, but they are compliance oriented. What that means is they are very good at debits and credits and tax returns. Very, very few CPAs have ever run a company outside of their CPA practice. So therefore, how, if they have never done it, can they tell someone else how to do it? And that's the problem. How can you teach someone, how can you coach someone to be an Olympic gymnast, uh, a gymnast if you've never been a gymnast yourself? It is not possible. And therein lies the, the disconnect. Because the small business owner is thinking while they, as you say, are doing it, doing it, doing it, they think their CPA and their accountant have their back. They're, they're watching what is happening. And if anything is going awry, they're going to fix it or they're going to bring it to the business owner's attention. What the CPA is doing is debits, credits, tax returns. They've got their head down. They're doing their work. They are doing it, doing it, doing it. No one is watching the ball. And therein lies the problem. Wonderful. And that's so, so critical for you all to hear. In short, that the way we have addressed all of the problems and opportunities in the world of small business, emerging business, mid-market companies, et cetera, and so forth, in the world that you and I are talking about, the way in which it's been done has been a disaster. That's why I created the E-Myth. Understand, over 40 years ago, the E-Myth is the entrepreneurial myth. It lives at the heart of the problem that every single one of you address. The entrepreneurial myth is that because I understand how to do the work, the work of a small business, um, John and Mary with their little photographic business, because I understand how to be a photographer, I understand how to create a company that does photography. And in fact, it's simply not true. And it lies at the heart of the great disaster 
behind the failure of most businesses that are started. Do you understand that last year, about a half a million companies were started in the United States and within the next five years, they'll all be gone? Hear me, I didn't say 20% will be gone. I didn't say 30% will be gone. I didn't say 40, well, I won't go on and on and on. They'll all be gone. Do you understand more companies are failing today than are starting today? And that's because of the thing we're talking about here. And the CFO role is at the heart of this. Because until we can quantify reality, we can't create a new one. Let me repeat that. Until we can quantify reality, we can't create a new one. But the quantification of reality isn't just quantifying the past reality, like a bookkeeper does, but quantifying the future. And the future reality is in fact tying the past reality with the present reality to what we can expect our reality to become both in old co and in new co, both in our personal life and our impersonal life, both in what we've done before, what we do today and what we're planning on doing tomorrow and how to merge those three in such a way that we can in fact have control over them. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's just a problem. I don't know what it is. I was born with it. <laughs> Understand? And it just pisses everybody off. That's great. Yeah, but there yeah. you go. So Fred, speak about that. Michael, that is absolutely perfectly on point. It is not about looking backwards. Accounting data is scorekeeping. It's like driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour, looking out your back window. Think about that for just a second. That will not have a good result. You have to know where you're going. You have to be able to predict where you're going to have to get into a different lane, take an exit, speed up, slow down. It is no different with a small company. It really is no different with any company. And I've seen some large multi-billion dollar companies that are no better at planning than small one-person uh, entrepreneurial companies. It, it's the same problem. So hear me, I, I wanna talk a little bit about Radical You, Fred. I wanna talk about Old Co and New Co so that you all can understand the relationship the chief financial officer has with each. Old Co is about three very critical functions. Now understand whether Old Co is just you and Mary living your little life um, or you and Mary who have already created a photographic small company. Old Co is both your personal life and your impersonal life and how you've done it up to now and how you're doing it today. And effectively, what you need to do is you've got to get old co handled. That's why we describe sustainability. It has to become sustainable, which means you have to develop your lead generation, lead conversion, and client fulfillment systems to the point that they can produce an optimal result, not for growth, but for sustainability absolutely critical you lead a sustainable life. So that's one critical component of it and one critical component of Fred's system as it helps you to focus on that system in order to create the sustainability out of it. You'll know as you quantify your performance how sustainable it actually is. That provides you with a state of mind that's critical because sustainability is insufficient. Growth is absolutely critical to awaken the entrepreneur within you to begin to focus on the new opportunity. Here we go again, sorry about that. Folks, I promise you next time it won't be there. 
Next time, it'll be perfect. <laughs> Our producer is saying, Gerber, cut the light or something. Okay. <laughs> In any case, Fred, <clears throat> speak about Old Coat for the moment. Yeah, that's exactly right. Also, Michael, obviously, you've been thinking about this for 50 years, and um, you are so dead on. It, it is it, the reality of the situation is that you have to have profit to generate cash, but you also have to have cash to generate profit. That cycle cannot be broken. You have to become sustainable. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. You have to have profit to create cash, meaning you're going to create cash inside, not go outside for cash. Right. And by inside, I mean, however and whatever you do in your old co to create cash flow, you have to create it profitably because without that profit, there will be no cash to invest in sustaining old co or creating new co. But at the same time, you need cash flow to create profit. So it's the organization and management of the two. Absolutely. And it's that cycle that cannot be broken. Let's talk about just real quickly a scenario where a company generates a certain amount of revenue, but they never collect it. It would have been better had they never generated that revenue to start with because there was cost associated with generating that revenue. And if they never get paid, they expended resources greater than the amount of cash coming in. So do not allow that to happen. Or Fred, or Fred which is even more the case if they receive it late. Absolutely. So the condition of our guys, the smallest of the small, because they don't have a system for collecting on time, they're always collecting it late, which produces a cash flow condition that is onerous to the health and sustainability of old co absolutely must be corrected. Absolutely. Uh, generating revenue is only part of the process. The other part of that process, as you say, and really the most important piece of that is converting that revenue back into cash. You cannot break that cycle. So, Years ago, um, one of our salespeople came to us at Michael Thomas Corporation. That was my first company. The Michael Thomas Corporation was the very first business coaching company on the planet. I'm talking about 19 freaking 77. <laughs> the Michael Thomas Corporation was Michael and Thomas. And effectively, we created a small business coaching company. And our dream then was to transform the state of small business worldwide. Our vision for the Michael Thomas Corporation was to create the McDonald's of small business consulting. Our purpose at the Michael Thomas Corporation was that every small business owner who understood our paradigm and applied it could be as successful as then a McDonald's franchisee. And our mission at the Michael Thomas Corporation was to invent a business development system that could be applied to every single small business on the planet, doesn't matter what kind of business it was. So obviously we had to have a critical notion about how to do that. Well, we did that by offering what we called the Michael Thomas Business Development Program. And we went out and sold that program with direct salespeople on the street calling on every small business on the planet. And at the same time, <laughs> and at the same time, we obviously had to collect our monthly fees from those who enrolled in our program. But one day, and we did that by invoicing them. 
Now, hear me. We're calling on small business, the smallest of the small. We've created a monthly fee that they had to pay for a program we were to deliver by telephone, fax, mail, and mo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. And we invoiced them. Well, one of our salespeople came back, Mary, our very best salesperson in the world. She said, have you ever thought about having it automatically debited from their credit card every month in advance? I said, Mary, you can do that? You understand, this is Michael Gerber's stupid. I've been stupid all my life, making every mistake, making every mistake in the book. I said, you can do that, Mary? She said, oh, you sure you can. She showed me <laughs> how to do that. And effectively, we did that. Hear me. We turned 90 day late into on time every time. 90 day late into on time every time by simply automating the process of collecting money in advance. What was astonishing to us is not one client objected to it. Not one. Absolutely not one. And Fred, that was the chief financial officer operating in our company. And when we went to our chief financial officer, who happened to be Tom of the Michael Thomas Corporation, and suggested this from sales on the street, who brought to us something we had no idea of, guess what? Our CFO did the, the reality check and in 20 minutes said, let's do it. And by the next morning, we were doing it. That's how quickly it took place. You can imagine the profound impact that had on our company. Oh, absolutely. And, and it is all about setting expectations, not only with your, your customer, your client, uh, whatever you call them, but it is the same kind of expectation that you need to set internally with yourself, with your own systems, with your own performance, and with your own ability to produce what you are expecting to produce. You have to be accountable and you have to have the system in the process in place in order to do that. And the very critical thing about that is the connection between the street and um, internally, our chief financial officer, our chief executive officer, our chief operating officer, our chief marketing officer, our chief sales officer, our chief technology officer, et cetera, and so forth. The orchestration of the process that exists between the two of us, which essentially means there's a better way to do everything every single person listening to us right now has to do but you have to define them as old co and new co. So you don't get caught up in trying to do what everybody tries to do wrongly, inaccurately, and always ineffectively fix your broken business. Hear me, stop thinking about fixing your broken business. This is not about fixing your broken business. This is about creating a new world. And that new world needs definition and parameters. And that is on the left, on the right, and right here in the middle. And as we awaken the entrepreneur within old co and new co, something stunning occurs. But it's a process. It's a process. So, Fred, let me ask you a question. How do you deal with that process? as you work with companies, <laughs> thank you very much. And oh, there we go again. As you work with companies, don't know what the problem is. As you work with companies, taking them through your system and applying it every day. Yeah, I, I think the most important aspect of that, Michael, is that our system is the same every day. 
it never changes. Our process is exactly the same today as it will be next month, as it will be next year. However, the data that, that you are using and the events that are occurring are changing all the time. But the process of how we manage those variations is so consistent and so replicatable that we are able to stay on track and follow the process. It, it is no different than any other process. Uh, again, I'll come back to the car analogy, and that is uh, if you are driving down a road, you continue driving down that road exactly the same way every time, every day, every road, you usually don't have a problem. But if one day you get in on the passenger side and you try to drive with your left hand, one day you get in the back seat and you're trying to drive with your right hand leaning over the seat, next time you're on the hood of the car trying to drive from outside through your window, nothing works. It's a consistency. It is the ability to stay focused on the task and focus on the goal and make sure that the process is right and being managed correctly all the time. And Fred, what you just said, I know, creates a reaction on the part of the people who are listening. And the reaction essentially says, oh, I would never get in the passenger seat. Oh, I'd never get into the back seat. Oh, I'd never get into, you understand what I mean? Oh, I do, absolutely. Yeah. But in their business, they're doing that every day. But in their business, they're doing that every single day. And this is an extraordinary thing. I'm sorry about the light, folks. We'll have that handled next time. Um, it, just accept it as um, being in the back seat, trying to drive in the front seat, and <laughs> having the difficulties all small businesses have. Um, I'm not embarrassed by it. In fact, it's kind of funny. But that's true. So what everybody does in the world of small business, and most especially in the smallest of the small, is attempting to create different results by doing the same stupid things. And the same stupid things are effectively trying to be what your business demands of you, rather than becoming who you need to be in order to grow your company and to create sustainability, not only in old co, but at the same time in new co. This is really, really critical, folks, to create sustainability, not just in old co, in where you are today, but in new co, where you're going to be tomorrow. But at the same time, and this is the critical message of Radical You, you're here to transform the state of something in the world. And so you take my dream to transform the state of small business worldwide, which effectively is identically the same as our dream today. You understand that dream. You understand that there is a way to realize that dream. You understand our vision portrays the way to realize that dream. And our vision was to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. What does that mean? It means turnkey consulting services that effectively Fred's chief financial officer can then relate to the outcome being produced and the systemic um, integrity of that system and be able to report on the lack of integrity of that system day after day after day after day. And as you begin to see inside the system through Fred's financial monitoring of that system, you can begin to understand where your company is truly going to grow and where it's not because you've lost control over what it is that enables you to grow, which is the system, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. I asked the question, and Fred, everybody, I, I asked it at the beginning of this conversation. There are so many sophisticated solutions, and they become more and more and more sophisticated with more and more and more software <clears throat> being created. 
in our IT world where everybody has a software solution to every problem everybody has to face. Unfortunately, the success of small businesses doesn't mirror the presumed success of that evolution of software solutions. That says small businesses are failing the very same rate today as they were 40 years ago. Explain that from the chief financial officer's perspective. Well, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great question. And uh, just to come back to what you were saying about your mission and your vision for your company back in 1977. Our mission, Michael, is so perfectly aligned with that. Our mission is to reduce the failure rate in small companies because it is unnecessarily too high. And so by doing that, we can not only save companies, but we can save people, we can save families. And that is our passion for doing that. But what we have to do, and you mentioned this at the beginning of, of your, your last comments, Einstein was a pretty, uh, pretty smart guy. And he said that the true definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you don't like your result, you have to change what you're doing. Change something. It's going to, it's going to change what you're doing, but do not expect a different result and continue to do the same thing over and over again. From a CFO perspective, it is, again, about clarity, and what I mean by clarity is being able to see where you are going, not looking out your back window, looking forward, looking for the exit, looking for when you, what is in front of you, dodge that piece of uh, debris on the road. And balance, balance between revenue and expense. If that is out of balance, you only have two options. You can either increase your revenue or decrease your expense. There is no other answer. You can go out and raise some capital if you want, but eventually that's going to run out and you're going to be right back in the same place. So today I'm in the process of reading a book and reading a book about the condition of America. And the condition of America um, is essentially um, a stunning condition where the ordinary among us, the working class among us, are completely overcome by the failure of the great companies within our country to deal with the working class in a way that at one point in our country they did. So the average income of the working class is less than $13 an hour. Now we're talking about the working class on an hourly basis, right. less than $13 an hour. The vast majority is less than $10 an hour. And effectively that's the case because the largest among us McDonald's, um, um, Walmart, et cetera, and so forth, um, haven't, in fact, made it possible for those people working in those companies to work full time. And the reason for that is very simple, because they've decided by keeping them less than full time they can save a considerable amount of benefits and um, higher pay and so forth and so forth and so forth. My point being that they decided to cut expense rather than do the opposite. And so cutting expense has taken the hide out of our working class. The strategy that's been applied has been an absolute economic disaster and a social disaster as well. So then what to do about it? Well, what we say is rather than taking a job with Walmart, 
rather than taking a job with McDonald's, rather than taking a job where you have no control over your financial life, become radically self-employed. And radical self-employment mm -hmm. is at the heart of radical you. And that means go to work on your life while old co is a job where you're not making it Take the time online to create NUCO and create a financial model for NUCO that will literally transform every single individual's life as they go and pursue it. So hear me, the dream is to transform the state of small business worldwide. The vision is to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. The purpose is that every small business owner can be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee. The mission is to invent the business development system. The job is the client fulfillment system that we must invent and turnkey. The practice is the client acquisition system that enables us to create our franchise prototype. The business is to replicate that practice times 10, and the enterprise is to replicate that business times 10. And hear me, we will teach every single person listening to us today online at Radical U, not only how to do that, but help you step by step by step while you do that and what we have done is to make it possible for every single one of you to do that at a annual tuition of only $479.40. That means once a year, 52 weeks a year, you're going to be learning and practicing how to go to work on your life, not just in your life, to awaken the entrepreneur within you. Fred? You're a delight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And I'd like you to tell every single person here about how to get your book and how to begin to work with us to transform the state of their lives worldwide in a way that they never even imagined possible before. Yeah, thanks, Michael. I appreciate you having me. It's always great to talk with you. Uh, we, we have these exchanges uh, quite a lot. And, and I really, really enjoy it every time. Uh, yes, uh, to get the book, go to emyth.theprofitbeacon.com and uh, you will be able to uh, uh, get that information there. Uh, you can also find out about our software there, uh, theprofitbeacon.com. And um, uh, we will uh, be right beside you, Michael. I think your program is fantastic. I think what we're doing is so perfectly aligned. It's just a natural extension of everything that you have been talking about for 40 years. Well, we're disrupting the world, Fred, you and I, and all of the people who are participating at Radical U. We're absolutely disrupting the world, making it possible for every single human being on the planet to truly awaken the entrepreneur within, without a coach, without a consultant, without an expert, using an expert system that we've invented are continually improving every single week to literally blow every student's mind. That's our job, that's our dream, that's our vision, our purpose, our mission, and that's what we intend to do in a way that nobody's ever done it before. Just find us at RadicalU.com and join us and make it happen. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to have been here. We've had a wonderful time. I want to thank Rob, who's produced this, and Fred, who's joined me. And I'll see you again with our next great guest, Brian Scudamore, who's applied what we're talking about here in creating his great growing company, one 800 Got junk. Are you kidding me? In the junk business? Yeah, he did that. 400 million a year worldwide. Thank you. Bye-bye.